Broker dealers are one of the four primary financial professionals that you'll need to be aware of for the exam. Essentially, a broker dealer is a financial firm that helps investors buy and sell securities. A number of different companies have broker dealer businesses that they operate, which include Fidelity Investments, Charles Schwab, Wells Fargo, TD Ameritrade, and Edward Jones. While all these companies are unique in what they do, each of them offer two primary services to their customers. First, custodial services, which basically is holding, safekeeping, and record keeping a customer's portfolio. If you have an account at a company like Fidelity or Charles Schwab, that account likely has a number of different investments in it, and you probably don't worry about the company losing your stock or not record keeping it properly or not reporting your gains and losses on those investments. That relates back to the custodial services these businesses provide. And the second big service are trading execution services. And that simply is, hey, if you wanna buy or sell an investment, we will do that on your behalf. Now we might charge you something or we might assess some type of fee to you for that service, but we'll do it for you. Now let's take a look at the legal definition of a broker dealer, which is actually a very important test point. In fact, I almost recommend you know this off the top of your head because it's likely to show up on your test. A broker dealer is a person in the business of soliciting or affecting securities transactions for the accounts of others or for their own account. To the untrained eye, this legal definition probably doesn't mean much, but if we break down the different parts of this definition, I think you'll understand better what exactly it's trying to say. Now first, the term person. A person is a pretty broad term. You're a person, I'm a person, but also the US government is a person. An elementary school is a person. A local business is a person. In particular, a person includes a natural person or a human being, but it also includes any legally formed entity. For exam purposes, I would always assume a broker dealer is a legally formed entity, not necessarily a human being, and that correlates with the real world. Virtually all broker dealers out there are legally formed businesses. However, it's possible a broker dealer is considered a natural person if a broker dealer business is set up as a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is a type of business where there's one business owner and essentially the human being and the business are kind of viewed as one and the same. That is the one instance where a broker dealer could be viewed as a natural person, AKA a human being. But again, I recommend you consider all broker dealers on the exam as businesses, as firms. Let's go to the next part of the definition. In the business of soliciting or affecting securities transactions, which is just a fancy way of saying, hey, this type of business is going to attempt to get their customers to buy and sell securities, or they're actually gonna do those types of transactions. Remember what we said up front, Broker dealers help investors buy and sell securities. Now, the last part of the definition is arguably the most important part, and it actually relates directly back to the name broker dealer. When they say for the accounts of others or for their own account, they are referring to the terms broker and dealer. Let's focus on the term broker first. Broker relates to the part where it says for the account of others. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, think about what a broker does. Let's take a step outside of finance real quick and go to real estate. If you're planning on selling your house, you're likely going to hire a real estate broker. That real estate broker's job is to connect you, the seller, with a buyer out there, and if they do, they earn a commission. And that, in general, is what brokers do. They connect buyers and sellers typically in return for some form of a commission. If you were to go to a broker dealer asking them to help you buy some stock and they connected you with some seller out there in the market and subsequently charged a commission, they just acted in a broker or what we also call an agency capacity. Let's go to the other term, dealer. And again, we'll step outside of finance for a second. If we think about a car dealership, car dealers buy cars from the public put it into their lot and attempt to resell that car to another customer in return for what we call the spread. Now that might sound confusing, but a spread is simply the difference between what a car dealership would buy a car for versus what they would sell that same car back to another customer for. So for example, if a car dealership buys a car from you for $5,000 and they sell that same car to another customer of theirs for $8,000, 
they just made a $3,000 spread. Dealers buy products into their inventory at a marked down price. And if you've ever sold a car to a car dealership, you know that you're selling it at a low price. And then that same dealer will take that product and plan to sell it to another customer of theirs at a marked up price price. When a broker dealer acts in this type of capacity, which we also sometimes refer to as a principal capacity, they do the same thing as a car dealership, but instead they do it with things like stocks, bonds, and other types of investments. And to link this back to the original legal definition, this is what we mean by a broker dealer trading for their own account. If you wanted to sell an investment and went to a broker dealer and they were to buy that investment from you and place it directly into their own inventory, they are basically trading directly with you utilizing their own account. Now to bring it all together, the term broker and dealer, these are two different terms that mean two completely different things, which might seem a little confusing, but broker dealers can act in either capacity on any given transaction. If you go to a broker dealer planning to sell stock, they could act as a broker and connect you, the seller, with a buyer and maybe charge a commission, or they might buy the security directly from you and place it into their inventory, essentially acting as a dealer. Broker dealers cannot act in both capacities simultaneously. That would literally be impossible, but that could be an important test point. And the main thing you want to be aware of there is that broker dealers could not charge a commission while simultaneously charging a markdown or a markup, depending on the type of transaction they're doing. Bottom line, broker dealers are securities firms that help their investors buy and sell securities and also typically maintain custody of their clients' assets. Now that we've gone through the definition of a broker dealer, let's take a look at a practice question to see how we might be asked about the material we just learned. All right. A broker dealer can be best described by which of the following definitions. If you want to take a second, pause the video, see if you can answer the question, and then we'll break it down together. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, let's see if you got the answer right. Now let's go ahead and just cut right to the chase. The answer is any person engaged in the business of affecting transactions in securities for the accounts of others or for his own account. We thoroughly discussed the legal definition of a broker dealer, and that's as close as it gets right there. Now, something you might be wondering, it mentioned, you know, for his own account at the end. Sometimes test questions will refer to a broker dealer in a way that might seem like we're talking about a natural person. And remember, again, it's possible a broker dealer is a human being if it's set up as a sole proprietorship. But still, of all the four choices, it's the closest one to the legal definition of a broker dealer. The tip off is that language at the end, for the accounts of others or for their own account. Anytime you see that language, you're most likely encountering the legal definition of a broker dealer. Now let's go through the other answers just to understand what they're saying and actually talk about what it's referring to because they all refer to something. Any individual who represents a financial firm in affecting or attempting to affect purchases or sales of securities. Oof. Now, that kind of sounds like a broker dealer, right? But there's a key term here, and the term is individual. Like we said up front, broker dealers are almost always going to be considered firms. There are two individual professionals that we'll discuss in this test, and those will be agents and investment advisor representatives, which you'll learn about later in the achievable materials. And this, in fact, is an agent. Agents are the primary employee of a broker dealer. Broker dealers are the businesses that help customers buy and sell securities, and the employees that represent that business are known as agents. Let's go to this one next. Any person who, for compensation, engages in the business of advising others on securities. This is what we call an investment advisor. Investment advisors are firms that don't necessarily help their investors buy and sell securities, but give them advice on what securities to buy and sell, when to buy and sell them, and essentially help them be better investors in the market. And last, any individual who represents a financial firm in offering securities advice, we see that term individual again. Whenever they mention the term individual for identifying professionals on this exam, you're likely going to be encountering an agent or an investment advisor representative. Those are the two human being roles that we talk about on this exam. And that in fact is an investment advisor representative. 
Just like how broker dealers are the firms and agents are the individuals that represent the firm when it comes to securities transactions, investment advisors are the firms that provide investment advice to their clients and investment advisor representatives are the individuals that represent that firm while giving advice to the same clients. Hi, I'm Brandon. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll love the courses I authored with Achievable. They include tons of real world examples, more videos just like these on dozens of key topics, a built in study planner, hundreds of chapter review questions, and unlimited practice exams. Our courses are competitively priced and you can try them out for free first to see if our style is the right fit for you. Follow the links below in the description to get started.